Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. If your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and to serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the, your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Epistle to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Juanisa, Juanisibus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment to the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome you, as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I will say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ, confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the name of God, Creator, Father, Mother, and Parent. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm going to prove by moving to this place to do my little homily that we Episcopalians are flexible. <laughs> and I have no idea whether the live stream audience will see or hear any of what I'm about to say and do. But as I watched wonderful younger disciples coming in the door, I thought, in the tradition of Michael Curry, I'm going to maybe just toss out all that I had to say, because I don't want to be boring, <laughs> never ever boring, and sometimes maybe even kind of fun. So let's see how it goes when Mother Meg tries it out this morning. If you read or listened carefully to our incredibly tight, our, our A-team reading the lessons earlier in the service, you probably wondered or might have been slightly concerned, what is the preacher going to say? Because there was a lot, wasn't there, about rules. Even the word commandments comes up. And then we have this book of Deuteronomy, which basically was a rule book. And by the way, not written by Moses, but written later, invoking Moses to get the people back in line. I guess if I were to ask each of us Christians here gathered today, older and younger, et cetera, uh, children of all ages, let's say, how many of us love rules? And of course, we're, some of us are returning to school where school, as we all know, has its own share of rules. And I might add that we Episcopalians are sometimes known more for our rules. But I'm going to get away from any words like rules or mandates. Oh my goodness, we know all too much about that. Or even about commandments and focus more on what the purpose of all those rules is. And also the harsh words, I must say, of Jesus that we have to leave everything behind. We even have to leave behind our families, the people that we love, to be willing to be fully available to God's work as disciples. And what the word I want to focus on today is instead that beautiful word in Deuteronomy, the purpose of all this is peace. Peace. I would suggest, moreover, the purpose of these rules, these rituals, and even what we sometimes Episcopalians as church mice like to say liturgy, worship, coming together in common prayer is really about seeking peace, God's peace, peace within us, peace among us, and peace in the world beyond this place. Now, as I think a lot of you know, as a church historian, I like to think a lot about how we came to this place today. 
specifically even this place of St. Barnabas. And what we can appreciate in our tradition as we read scripture, often ancient scripture like in Deuteronomy, we know that we have come to this place built on literally centuries of other Christian saints before us who have developed their own communities and traditions. And we value that. And in this church, we carry that with us in a service of worship that very much resembles that of the Roman Catholic Church and not by chance because we are descended from it. And part of what we do here to honor that foundation is in our traditions. Let's not call them rules. The prayer book refers to them as rubrics. But let's speak of it as our tradition. And more specifically, I'd like to say, how is that meaningful today in this time? Thanks be to God and thanks to all of those predecessors, including the churches from which we descend, we have a different situation today. And that's why I focus on the word peace today at St. Barnabas, rather than some of the other stronger texts shall we say, that we had read before us so wonderfully. Because I believe that we are the product here at St. Barnabas, not only of those predecessors that were ancestors, shall we say earlier Christians, but we are very much the product of our immediate predecessors and those we see around us today. We are each and every one not only disciples, but in some sense, we are the ones carrying on that tradition for the purpose of creating and sustaining our spiritual peace and for motivating the peace of those around us and ultimately renewal so that we can perpetuate peace in the world beyond us. I wouldn't want to leave the subject of tradition, not a popular one perhaps in a sermon, on a, Saturday, on a Sunday in the late part of the summer. But without mentioning all of what I see as the tradition here that we are blessedly given and given the responsibility of continuing. And that would be to speak of our music ministry and of our long-serving director of music, Michael Rausch. I know that many of you are quite aware of his incredible strategic role in the perpetuation of tradition. But I think that we're probably not aware as much as we should be of how meaningful that is in terms of the spiritual peace that it ultimately produces in this place. I'd also like to suggest that we, the church professionals, if you will, together represent a kind of team that I think tries to make this particular physical space, kind of sacred opportunity that is so hard won in our busy lives in this day and age, in which we focus simply on our own peace with God. I would refer to it as sacred, I would refer to it as special, and I do feel that coming together physically, which may include our live stream audience, I hope we have some today, but the physical gathering in common prayer central to the Episcopal Church is really where we do this best. And I do believe that there's a reason why we do set aside spaces, our bishops come and consecrate them for the purposes of worship because we want to keep that a peaceful place of renewal, very separate from all these practical matters that our wonderful vestry has to contend with every other hour on every other day. So I'd like to as well give thanks for all that we are, for the, those that have preceded us, for the tradition that we've inherited, for each and every one of you that becomes a part the moment you walk into this place on this gorgeous campus, become a part not only of the disciples of Christ, but of St. Barnabas particularly for its ministry, for, as a part of its worship, a part of its community, and ultimately has now become a part of its tradition. 
which by virtue of standing in the center aisle, I hope to demonstrate, evolves. <laughs> Despite our reputation for being frozen, <laughs> chosen, we Episcopalians do evolve and have, and we do it each and every day. And I'd like to specially mention a wonderful evolution in this church in the recent years is to invite children to the altar as a Eucharistic prayer is said, as a living embodied demonstration of the fact that our worship is our own. It is God's. And yet it also lives in a very long, centuries-old tradition represented in our prayer book. By the way, yes, we have prayers for every occasion. My father, the Methodist, would say, we require reading our prayers. <laughs> Spontaneity is sometimes not our strength. But what I do believe our strength is, as you're hearing in everything I say, is it's a tradition that lives in the people, in the community of this church. I also say this because I believe that tradition can be a source of extreme comfort, especially in a time of transition. When we focus here in this sacred space on God, on that which is eternal and everlasting, we can feel a far less sense of fragility, which I believe is not the case in this church. Fragility that comes from the very sincere loss of two full-time clergy as yet to be replaced by someone else. And of course, as you know, my role is temporary. But I choose to think of it as blessed. That is to say that for what, however long and in whatever way, we have each, including me, been called to St. Barnabas to be a part of the beauty and worship, to be a part of the discernment of the future, to be a part of the work that Christ has given us to do first and foremost. And part of that work is what we do in this sacred space. May we stand and join together in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of our prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are located on page 392, form 6, page 300, 
and 92. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those far along. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the world, justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. Justice and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Ian and Laura, our bishops, and for Jeffrey, our bishop-elect, and for Meg, our priest. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. I ask your prayers for Betty, Charlie, Elizabeth, Heather, Janet, Javier, Ken, Nan, Rosita, Sean, Sam, Susan, Tony, and Walter. And from those in the armed forces, Logan, Parker, Peter, Mary Rose, and Morgan. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life we exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after any personal goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Thank you again for the reading. That's peace. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for your lovely job as always. Good morning. Good morning. So nice to you all. Good morning. <laughs> Please be seated for a few announcements. I am going to start by mentioning that there are refreshments in the parish hall. Yes, David is Please. among his many jobs this today is to provide cookies and refreshments. And as part of some of our new tradition, we invite everyone to stay within the worship space to be able to hear Michael's beautiful postlude, um, which is so worthy of our apt attention as we conclude our worship Sunday. And afterward, then hopefully as a group to go to our refreshment time. So I have done my duty and will not be reprimanded by Susan for forgetting to invite the congregation to the best part of Sunday, social hour. Take it away. Okay. 
I uh, woke up this morning and panicked because I hadn't gotten the cookies. So I raced over to the grocery store, got cookies, got here, and there was a box of cookies waiting, and I'm going, great, okay. <laughs> so we've got our work to do with the cookies. Divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, good morning. Um, next week starts a new year, uh, and it's all about come back to St. Barnabas. We will have the choir with us. And Matt, who's part of the choir and up there, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, I think it's been an excellent thing to have one member of the choir here each Sunday during the summer, and it certainly has helped me. Thank you. Um, so next weekend, besides the choir, there will be a food truck here with pizzas, so I will be here. Um, we will have a bouncy house, and we hope to have as many people as possible. And this really is the beginning of the year. And you know we want as many people as possible. The next announcement that's important, especially for us on the vestry, on the 20th, which is a Tuesday, there'll be a Zoom call with Amber Gear. She works for the bishop, and then she's in charge of the transition. The key thing for me is, once she's talked to us and laid out what's going to happen, it really unleashes us to talk to candidates. We have been fortunate in that we have a consultant who has come up with some names for us. And I've been chomping at the bit to get at it, but you know, you've got to wait, do things properly. So anyway, uh, she will be talking to us on the 20th. Um, we will be using a Zoom call. You can, I guess the easiest way, send an email to Alessandra and she will give you the link and I'm sure we'll be sending out an invite, you know, to all, everybody in the parish. So those are two important things, and um, back to you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. September 20th, Tuesday, on Friday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave us himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you're able and join together in our post-communion prayer found on page 365 of our prayer book. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.